Hello glue sniffers. I built and primed this T34 about 5 years ago and then it sat in the corner until now. It's an old Tamiya kit from the 70s and I upgraded it with some welds, textures and a lot of photo etched parts. The primer was Valeo Black and we will start from there. I used the 4BO modulation set from Amo. The shades are great, but airbrushing them is another story. No worries, I will show you the solution. I started with the darkest color and applied it as an overall coat, leaving the strongest shadow places clear. Then it was time for the Russian base. Again the whole model, but I tried to put it on slightly smaller areas. The process for the light base is the same. We are still covering large surfaces and creating a transition by narrowing down the areas of application. I found out that Mr. Leveling Thinner works great with Amo Acrylics and my mix was 5 drops of paint and 1.5 ml of thinner. If you are wondering how much is that, here you go. Let's say a lot of thinner. The lightest color from the set was used to bring out the details. Don't go crazy. There will be an additional highlighting step later. Here you can see the paint job. I finished it with a coat of Mr. Leveling Thinner. That should melt the paint slightly and you will end up with a really smooth finish. The next step was applying Tamiya Clear where the decal should go. I never did that, so it was time to try it. And thanks to God I did it. Back in the day I bought this set of decals from Easy Decal. They are thick and shiny, and I wouldn't recommend them to you. After the application I flooded them with softening solution and tried to hammer them in place with a stiff brush. I repeated the process like 3 times and the results were, well, you can see for yourself. Then I covered the entire model with two heavy coats of Tamiya Clear. At least now everything is shining, not only the decals. We already have a pretty contrasting paint job, but let's go one step further. It's time for a pin wash. I use dark brown for green vehicles from Amo. A few drops of white spirit and we are ready to go. The overall glossy coat is there to help the wash flow better. I applied it to every detail on the hull and on the turret. I worked in sections. When the wash was dry to the eye, I started cleaning away the excess with a fine brush and some white spirit. I don't know, I still can't make those washes work the way I want. Maybe the wash is old, who knows. Ok, the pin wash step is visible, but it's not so strong because we did a good job with the airbrushing. Those wheels have so many lines and details, but I only applied the wash around the bolts. The black primer showing through did the rest. Now we will finish the job with the final highlight that I promised. I took the lightest color from the set and applied it to details with the brush. A very fine brush is a must and Amo acrylics are good straight from the bottle for this task. Realistic? Probably not. Looking cool? Oh yeah! You would be thinking, we already applied the lightest color with the airbrush, what's the point? Well, as you can see applying it in thin coats is one thing. Brushing it on straight from the bottle is a totally different story. The effect may seem exaggerated, but at later steps will turn it off, trust me. Before the weathering you need all the contrast you can get. Well, I think that the pin wash and the final highlight did their jobs. A subscription would be much appreciated and don't forget to hit the bell icon too. Now we will seal the paint job and knock off that glossy surface. We will do that with VMS matte varnish. It should be applied straight from the bottle in heavy wet coats. Airbrushing this thing is like pulling barbed wire from your back hole. The airbrush is blocking, restarting, farting and spitting. You think that you have ruined everything. But after 20 minutes of drying, bam! I mean, look at this thing. Perfect. I totally recommend it to you. So the first part is after us, I don't know how to call it, the base painting maybe? Bottom line we have a nice contrasting paint job and we are ready for weathering. I haven't addressed the stowage and the details yet and this is because we will start with sponge chipping which can get pretty messy. 
I could take the lightest color from the modulation set again, but I wanted something different for the light chips. So I took Russian green base and made it lighter with white. One drop of green and two drops of white straight from the bottle and you're good to go. I learned two things about sponge application. First, the sponge is good just for making a lot of small chips all over the place. Don't try to do a specific effect with it. We will use the brush for that. And second, go really easy with the amount of those chips. It takes a blink of an eye to get carried away and overdo things. I added a drop of paint drying retarder from NK and a drop of water to the mix and we are ready for the brushwork. Now that you have all the control you need, you can create some specific effects. You can connect some small chips to make them bigger and recreate some bigger chipped areas. Use the finest brush you have and with a steady hand you can also make some long scratches made by, I don't know, tree branches? Enough light chips I think. With this step we also managed to add some variation to the monochromatic paint scheme. Nice. Now we will proceed with the dark chips. You can't go wrong with the mix of German Camo Black Brown and Dark Grey, both from Valeo. 3 drops of brown, 1 drop of grey, 3 drops of paint drying retarder and 2 drops of water. It may seem complicated, but you will end up with a perfect mix that will be workable for a long time. Put the dark chips in the biggest light chips. These are places where the paint was chipped to the bare metal. Just take a look at this part's transformation. I love this step. Don't forget the wheels. I will take a few seconds to say thank you to my amazing Patreon team. Guys, your support is fantastic. If you would like to support me on my journey and get a lot of goodies in return, check out my Patreon page. You will get a personal modeling tutor and almost daily content for a small amount of money. It's free for the first 7 days, so you can see what is like free of charge. Now, let's check what we have done so far. Well, this time I think that the amount of chipping isn't exaggerated. Happy me! You can also see how this step adds a lot of life to the model. Of course, it can be done more precisely and better, but I will take that and say that this is my best chipping so far. Now we can do some details, stowage or both together. We will start with the rusty stuff. First, you need a nice grey color and neutral grey from Valeo is perfect for this task. Black and white are there for variation. For a start, we will paint all the rusty stuff with a nice coat of neutral grey. Spare tracks, towing cables, the saw and the exhausts. If the parts are made from more segments, like the tracks, you should do some variation. And even if the parts are single pieces, it's always good to add some black and white stains. For the exhausts, the approach is a bit different. You do some chipping with pure white and then some black around the exits. Ready for some magic? I took streaking rust effects from Ammo and added some white spirit. You paint all the parts with this and while it's still wet, you add some blobs of light rust wash. And then all you have to do is drag around those two products until you are happy with the result. If you are not sure, add more white spirit and make multiple applications. While the effects were on the table, I put some streaking rust on the dark metal chips. I made about 4 chips at a time and started blending them immediately with white spirit. The effect was drying quite fast and I think that the matte surface has something to do with it. Progress check. You can see that the shades of grey are still somehow visible and the rusty parts look cool to me. And with the rusty chips, the whole model now has a slightly warmer hue. Without even knowing it, we apply the selective filter, which is also welcome. Let's move to the wooden stuff. For those wooden crates, I wanted a different color from the rest of the model. 
we are still talking green, but something to make them stand out. I chose olive green from Vallejo, a bit hard, but you will notice them, that's for sure. I skipped the metal hinges, because they were painted in Russian green. Then I added some basic skin tone, to make the paint lighter. With this mix, I did some wood grain and also some edge highlighting. I applied an enamel wash to the details and cleaned away the excess. And the final touch was some wear and chips with deck tan. Mostly around the corners. Crates done. Tree trunk time. I started with burnt umber as a base coat. And now I will show you an easy trick if you want to paint two different objects but make them look like they belong together, to the same vehicle for example. You just have to use the same paint basic skin tone for the highlights, the same enamel wash for the details and the same paint for the final details. In this case, we are simulating bark texture with dry brushing, but again, we are using deck tan. The only extra step on the trunk was painting a cut circle with old wood from Vallejo. The back is missing some stowage, don't you think? Well, wait until the end of the video, there is a nice surprise coming. Let's finish some wheels now. We have four types of wheels on this tank, but in terms of finishing them, we can divide them into two categories rubber ones and metal ones. For the metal ones we will use the same mix as for the dark chips, take care to only paint the surface that is in contact with the tracks. I took the opportunity and I also did some wear on those hooks with the same mix. I missed them while I was chipping the tank. For the rubber parts we used the same two colors, but the formula has changed. One part grey and one part brown and you have a nice color for tires and company. Same two colors mixed differently for two different parts, but again they will look like they belong together. I applied some dry Europert pigment to the metal wheels. Just rub it on with a brush. I saw this trick in a modeling book, but I don't think that this pigment is totally necessary. Anyway. Then you take a simple pencil, mine is HB, and you draw some marks on the contact surface. At the end you cover the entire surface with the same pencil and you rub the surface with your finger. And this is it, nice dirty polished metal effect. For the rubber wheels we will start with an acrylic wash. One drop of light matte from Vallejo and I don't know, a lot of water? Make it thin. You apply this to the rubber and be sure to put it in all the cracks and details. When dry, you should end up with something like this. All we have to do now is bring back some rubber by dry brushing some dark grey on it. Lightly. Also the wheels are done and it was quite a smooth sail until now, don't you think? No worries, shit's about to hit the fan and the umbrella, well, never mind. From the beginning I had a dusty look in mind for this tank. I decided to use pigments, because nobody is using them anymore and I like to be a smartass. Europert was a bit dark, so I wanted to make it lighter with some white dry pastel. It worked without problems. I started with the wheels. I just brushed the pigment mix into the crevices. Quite a smooth process. And then another brilliant idea. Let's try to apply pigment fixer with an airbrush. Can it be airbrushed? Absolutely yes, no problems. Is it useful? Yeah, like water in your shoes. You can see that all those smooth transitions vanished. I was left with stark lines of pigment in the details. But we have washes for that, right? Let's try this another time. I reapplied the pigment try to fix it and it was gone again. Spoiler alert, it will not reappear. Ok, ok, I get it, I should apply those suckers without fixing them. Fortunately, the process is quick and quite fun. The wheels were done and I started the part under the fenders, but something was missing, volume and texture. The solution? 
texture paste. This is my DIY paste and it is dry until you add some PVA, glue and water. You control the consistency with water. You apply it and you blend it with a wet brush. The effect was kept light because I am doing a dusty tank in an urban scene and this is just some accumulated dirt from who knows when. I added some to the wheels too. I know, I should do this before the pigments, but this paste wasn't planned at all. When the paste is dry, the result is a dark earthy texture and now the surface is taking the pigments like a champ. Don't forget the texture paste on the wheels too. The tracks are a real model and they were the only thing I started painting 5 years ago. They were burnished and then I did this nice rusty look with different shades of red, yellow and brown acrylics. I started with the same light mud wash as for the rubber wheels. Some stains here and there and some speckling for finish. I finished them with the pigment mix again and the tracks also accepted it perfectly. Doing dust effects with pigments is super easy and quick. Apply a small amount around the details and spread them around. If the dust stain is too white, just trim it with a wet brush. I know that I shouldn't do this, but I was wetting the brush in my mouth. Gross, but saliva does miracles. Another great characteristic of pigments is that it's basically dust, so it falls around quite naturally. While dusting around, I noticed that I skipped the headlight. With no fancy transparent lenses back in the 70s, I had to do the effect with paint. First, I painted it with blue-gray pale. Then, I added some white and made the upper half lighter. I also managed to put a drop of black acrylic wash into the gap, you know, to obtain some shadow. And in the end, I covered everything with Tamiya Clear straight from the jar. Headlight done. The dust was done and I was super happy with the result. I posted the photos on Patreon and the title was something like Ready for Grease, Oil and Fuel Effects. I put the model in a box and took it to the club pizza. My modeling club always meets in restaurants. Italians, I love them. All the colleagues were giving me compliments, fantastic job. My ego was through the roof. The next morning I took the model out of the box. Almost all the dust effects were gone because of the humidity, I think. All except the front part. Ah, no, those are oils. Let me show you. The line between a smart and a dumbass is thin. And I crossed it this time. Lucky for us, the oils are there to save the day. I used Amos Oil Brusher Buff. You need a fine brush for the application, a totally dry flat one for blending, and another flat one for cleaning away the excess. Start by putting a small amount of oil at the destination. Then spread it around with the dry brush. At the end, Take the other flat brush, moistened with white spirit, and clean away the excess. The dry brush is there to spread the oil around and make a nice transition. It should never touch white spirit, and you should clean it on a piece of paper. The other, let's say wet one, is there for excess cleaning. Also this process is not rocket science, but you will need some time to take the hand of it. Unfortunately, it is also much more time consuming compared to dry pigments, but hey, those oils are here to stay. I decided to use Tamiya Buff and an airbrush for the lower part. My standard recipe is half of the reservoir of Mr. Leveling Thinner and one to two brush loads of paint. It should be very thin. The first reason for the airbrush application is that the lower part should receive much more dust and it's quicker that way. The second one is more of an idea. I will be dusting the scene with Tamiya Buff, which is a bit darker compared to the oil brusher. That way, we are already making some transitions towards the ground color. We will see, said the blind man. It seems like a deja vu to me, but this time it's for real. The dust is done. I like it, 
And now we are really ready for oil, grease and fuel effects. I started with engine oil from AK. You will need it straight from the bottle and also tint with white spirit. Start with a tin mix and then start adding it pure towards the centers. Some speckling never hurts. Same story for the upper part. The effect will dry to a semi-glossy wet result and it's very cool, I like it. Then I took some engine grime from Amo. I painted the tracks where the wheels are running. Just a nice dark grimy trace. I put them against something stiff and straight. I used the triangle as a guide and I wrapped the dark traces with the graphite stick. Polished metal effect again. Now all we have to do is bring out some metal with a fine sanding sponge. I was very gentle and I was barely putting any pressure on the sponge. Let's move to the body. There is nothing new here. Start with some engine oil and white spirit. Continue with engine oil straight from the bottle. Some engine grime is used to make the spots darker. All those effects can be used wet on wet, so they blend together nicely. Don't forget the speckling step. For the reservoirs I used fuel stains from AK. This was applied straight from the bottom, where the refueling points should be. When the shooting was done a friend of mine sent me a photo. This beast had 6 internal and 3 external reservoirs. The two big ones in the middle were for oil. So I will have to add fuel stains to the other 4 points. Now we know. It is very easy to fall into patterns with the wheels. In order to avoid that, put two wheels away. They will be let clean. Then take two of them and use only the speckling application. And the rest of them should receive the whole process. It is time to put the parts together. First the wheels, then the tracks, and finally the turret. We still need some finishing touches and we will be done. I added some chipping to the welds. I used steel from Amo. You know, hashtag welds don't rust. I softened the effect by rubbing these chips with the pencil and blending this with a silicone brush. While the pencil was out I also polished the hooks and the machine gun barrel. Now to the pigments again. No worries. Just some smoke effects on the exhaust and on the gun barrel. And now for the cherry on the top. When you finish the gun barrel, just polish the upper edge with the pencil again. I mean, look at this. Remember that I said that the back is missing some stowage? I mean, the tank looks cool to me, but the back is a bit empty. Well, here you go. Filled in a second. Those 7 guys will be the topic of the next episode. If you are impatient, like I am, you can check out my Patreon page. Until the next one, this is the Finnish T34. I hope you like it. Stay healthy, stay cool and put some glue on the styrene too. Bye.